tell you what, first of all, I want to thank everybody here at CPAC. I want to thank all of you folks for caring enough to get involved. You know, generally at a speech like this, I'd want to be talking about freedom. But based on Tuesday, I think I want to talk about Wisconsin instead. A lot of people ask me, what is happening in Wisconsin? You know what's happening? Democracy. And the day after the election, I, I did see a little video clip that was passed around the internet, and, and I realized it was passed around to show a little humor. And it, was this, it was this gentleman, he, he was for the recall, and he started weeping. <laughs> and he claimed that the election represented the end of democracy. Now, it, 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 it was a little humorous, but it was sad. And what it really was, it was nonsense. Because what we had on display was democracy. And, and I know you're going to hear an awful lot of speeches here today. And you're going to hear some great speeches by some great individuals. So let me just kind of make my point by telling a story. And I don't really want to talk about myself, but let me talk about my experience, my perspective of what happened in Wisconsin. And it started. It started with President Obama in the summer of 2009 when he was trying to pass that health care monstrosity. And he, this is a not totally accurate pair, uh, quote, but it's exactly what he meant. He said, you know, these evil money-grubbing doctors, they'll take out a set of tonsils for a few extra bucks. Now, I found that pretty offensive because our first child, our daughter, Carrie, was saved by these wonderful individuals that dedicate their lives to saving other lives. And our president, the President of the United States was demonizing these wonderful human beings in order to pass something that was going to grow government, that was going to steal our freedoms. So I stepped up the plate. I did it pretty late, though. I didn't do it till 2010. Why am I standing before you here as a United States Senator? Is because of people like you. And that's the point I need to make. There's no way I would be standing before you were it not for the party structure that was set up in Wisconsin, the volunteers, the efforts of the Tea Party. And this is critical, the way the Tea Party and the other groups cooperated with the Republican Party to bring home victory. And that's exactly what happened on Tuesday night as well. Wisconsin has to be a model. So, I was elected. So was Governor Walker. We turned a very blue state red. We won. But we realize we're on a pretty short leash. Certainly Governor, Governor Walker understood that. So what did he do? He first of all, took the first step in solving any problem. He acknowledged we had one. Something President Obama is not willing to do, that many of the Democrats in Washington simply aren't even willing to acknowledge the problem, much less work with us in good faith to solve it. And then he went about methodically to put forward real solutions. And I can't tell you, on Tuesday night, I have always been proud to be from Wisconsin, to be the senator from Wisconsin. But I have never been more proud than I was Tuesday night I was not only proud of Governor Walker, the courageous members of our legislator who faced, truthfully, just repugnant levels of intimidation and showed the courage, but who I was most proud of is the voters of Wisconsin, the people that stood behind Scott Walker and the assembly men and women and the state senators and said, listen, if you make the tough choices, if you take the tough votes, we will be there and we will support you. And that is what is so incredibly important about that result. You know, Governor Walker, when he, when he came into office, he faced a pretty significant problem, a $1.8 billion a year budget deficit. You know what we're facing in Washington? 
In 2010, we just experienced a $1.4 trillion, then a $1.3 trillion a year deficit. Governor Walker fixed that problem, and he didn't even have to raise taxes. In Washington, we've simply punted. We've kicked the can down the road because we have no leadership. That is what makes November 2012 so incredibly important. The lessons from Wisconsin is that you can fix a budget deficit without raising taxes. That if you make the tough choices, the voters will stand behind you. That's just crucial. I'd say the other very big lesson, and this is something we really need to learn, is one of the first actions Governor Walker took is he said, listen, Wisconsin, we're open for business. That is an incredibly important attitude. You know, to me, as a business person, it's amazing that business owners in our economy actually is growing a little bit, creating a few jobs when they're under the assault, under the attack of this administration. What it tells me is that the American economy is a phenomenon. It's a marvelous thing. And all we need to do is get out of the way, unleash the entrepreneurial spirit of this nation, And we will be amazed at how quickly this economy can turn around. And I just think that's absolutely true. You know, one of the big problems in Washington, I'm a business guy. This is a foreign land to me. This is an alternate universe in Washington. <laughs> but what's really amazing is this administration, how very little experience anybody serving this administration has in the private sector. It's apparent. You know, if you don't understand the private sector, you don't even respect it. If all you know is government, you look to government as a solution. And that's what this administration does. So the reason I got behind Governor Romney is he has that business experience. He's going to bring an attitude of optimism, and that can make all the difference in the world. So as I travel around Wisconsin, quite honestly, as I travel around the nation, you know, I talk about with charts and graphs and using the numbers, talk about what the problem is. Rand certainly ta talked a little bit about that before me. It's easy to describe the problem in numbers, but it's actually easy to describe it simply. That the problem we face in, in this country is that far too many Americans have forgotten. And what's even worse is far too many Americans were never taught the foundation, the foundational premise of this nation. And that's the government isn't, some, isn't here to solve our problems. By and large, government is something to fear, because as it grows, our freedoms recede. So the other message I take as I travel around Wisconsin, because we have been in perpetual re-election mode here, I realize our volunteers are weary. I realize our donors are tapped out. And I realize how obnoxious my response is to that tough. <laughs> you know, the left has been relentless in addicting Americans to government. They have been relentless at removing our freedoms. We need to be every bit as relentless in preserving our freedom. That's your job. Now, as a United States Senator, I witness all kinds of things. I've been to Afghanistan. I've met our troops. I am awed and I am and, and inspired by them. I've been to Walter Reed and Bethesda Naval Hospital. I've seen the courage of our wounded warriors. I've been to Arlington. As families have laid their sons and daughters to rest. The American spirit's alive. It lives in those individual hearts. It lives in your hearts. Everybody here realizes this is a fight for our fundamental freedom. And you know what you have to do. So God bless your efforts, and God bless America. Thank you.